Okay, another beautiful day here in California. Did not rain today, which is great. Um, it's going to go over a very quick thing about uh, grounding an engine, uh, or grounding a chassis, for that matter. So, you guys can see right here that I brought out uh, these large, oversized... These are Sherlock, they're not Radlock. These are designed to be a much higher current capacity, 300 amp. So these are, as I click disconnect on the back here. Okay. These are sealed much better than the standard Radlock. Okay. This is for double aught gauge so zero zero it's a two slash zero is how they write it and these are directional I think let's see where was the there it is okay and what I did here of course I routed around the air conditioning and the emap canister the point of the video is about grounding right your grounding needs to be at a star point at the center of your engine bay for electromagnetic uh, interference. And the reason why is this chassis itself, this, this body of the car, is going to be steel, it's going to be aluminum, it's going to be things that do not conduct electricity very well. So, if you relocate a battery in the trunk or in the little uh, panel here like what I did, right, so... This, mine, is relocated right there, okay? There's terminals, positive, negative. I have these two huge cables running through. One is positive, one is negative. They run all across the inside of the body. And this is uh, a thing with audiophile stuff. If you have signals from the radio, they cannot be on the same side as the power, right? So. That would either go center channel for RCAs, or that would go here, okay? Mine go on the driver's side. So, you want them to be as far away as possible so you don't get interference into your electrical systems. Okay, now, now we know how that's routed, and trying to get in the idea of why, is when you have a, you know, 400 amp draw from the starter or a CDI box that's 60 amps off of here. You want this to be as correct as possible. So if we have a battery, we're not going to worry about its capacity, all that stuff right now, but we're thinking purely in material sciences. You'd want to have a oxygen-free copper direct to the battery on everything you can. So if it's going through the body that's aluminum and steel, which do not conduct electricity very well, copper is pretty much one of the best conductors, and oxygen-free copper will last forever on a car. You want that to be as much of a direct connection to the battery as possible, and your resistance from the center point of an engine to everything off a single star point is going to be our lowest resistance method. You can daisy chain a few things, but ideally you want to keep them all off of a singular point. And the reason we do that is because the resistance of that singular point is going to be the lowest resistance for each point for everything it's going off of. Versus if you're running it through the body, through this, your resistance could be well into the hundreds of ohm uh, per foot. Uh, which is crazy to think about, but that's what happens when you have a 40-year-old car or 30-year-old car with rust and stuff like that. This could also increase the lifespan of your paint because if you're going through all this stuff and it's painted surfaces and sealed surfaces and such, you're just creating more of a load on this <laughs> chassis that you want to survive. Taking a full car apart and doing a rotisserie-style restoration is outrageous, right? but running a little hole through here and getting a direct connection to the battery with oxygen-free copper, I would have less than like, I think it's two ohm or less for this entire distance for really good wire. 
um, it's just, it's a no brainer. So just like you bring your power up and this power would go to the alternator, then the alternator would have a line that goes down to the starter. The ground will be a centralized point for all of its grounding. One more thing to note is it does come down to the quality of your wire. So, you know, you can use the audiophile type stuff. Here's what I found. It's very expensive stuff, but it is really good. It's M13486, uh, 115 is a color. So this, so I have a strand of it here, double lock gauge. Okay. This stuff is incredibly expensive, but this will handle over 300 amps. Most of you would only need this, okay? This is a 300 amp system because I have a 270 amp alternator. I have a big ass amp that handles about 150 amps, uh, three fuel pumps, four fans, stuff like that. So I'm, I'm Captain Overkill. ProWire USA has a really great uh, two gauge. Or this is two and this is OO. Right, so it's two slash zero. This is a really nice double shielded, very, very flexible word size. This will handle most of your cards. This is what I use for my PMUs, and the PMUs are direct to that. So, <clears throat> anyways, figured I'd try to make a little quick video because I keep having to correct this on people, and it's it's a little frustrating because they'll be getting some interference on a sensor. You'll see this on even the ECU sensors, even though those are internally regulated as a signal, the ECU itself is being grounded off of something that has a lot of resistance. So then you're getting problems. And this transfers to every part of the car. So, um, let's say you're going wide open throttle and you're doing a data log and you're seeing your, your throttle position is 100%, 100%, 100%, jiggle, 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 gone. Why did it do that? Well, what ended up happening is the electromagnetic feedback of the coils or of something on the engine fed back into the engine's or the ECU's ground, which is an isolated signal ground that it's only on the ECU and not touching the body anywhere. It's still fed into that chassis ground for the ECU and caused every single signal wire, so that's all your sensors, every single sensor on the ECU, to create a electromagnetic fluctuation. And so that's why grounding is a huge thing. And the more I see it wrong, the more I'm trying to say, take a step back, correct it at the source it's just like music if you have a bad source of music it's going to sound like shit you can have the best speakers best dynamically corrected uh, entertainment but the second you have a crappy source it's all bad doesn't matter doesn't matter how good the rest of the thing is if your source sucks the rest of it's going to suck and there you go that's it for today